Ayo, what up? It's your boy. What do you think the best anime of the past decade is? That's a difficult question, which I also get asked quite a bit or similar questions. And I feel it's very difficult or even impossible to come up with a definitive list, but goddamn, do some people still try? And today on the chopping block is Kotaku. Uh, now, you might hear that name and uh, start to bring back some PTSD on some of, in my opinion, one of the most most skewed and uh, contrarian articles on nerd culture that has ever been written on the internet, but it turns out that they also have some opinions on anime. So I actually saw this over on Twitter today, a top 30 best anime of the decade ranked list that Kotaku has created uh, back last month. Uh, I don't know why I'm just finding out about this list, but uh, I figured, you know, as, uh, as someone who has been watching anime for the past decade on and off, I figured I would give my two cents to see just what Kotaku's tastes in the 30 best anime of the decade might be. Now we did a similar video with uh, IGN's top 10 anime of all time list, which I will leave up in the card up there and also link in the description below. So go check that out. But I'm kind of curious to see what they might have on this list. Just by looking at the beginning of this slideshow, I can already tell that they're gonna have obviously One Punch Man, which was expected. Odd Taxi, which is a surprising entry, but very, you know, valued. And for, looks like there they have Blue Period. So I wonder how, you know, fast stretching they're going to be. I wonder how much of this list is gonna be recency biased. I guess we will find out. Let me know your thoughts about it down in the comments below. Without further ado though, let's check out this list. Is it stinky or is it pretty decent? Number 30 is Kakegurui. All right, not a great start. <laughs> okay, look, uh, Kakiguri was a great show. Don't get me wrong. But in terms of the whole gambling aspect of, uh, of, of anime, there's been a lot of gambling anime out there, obviously. And Kakiguri is probably one of the more recent ones that has like really come out. And uh, look, I, I enjoy Kakiguri. But I personally would not put it in a top 30. Because for one, it's not even the best gambling anime created, period. That one obviously goes to series like Kaiji and Akagi. And also, I don't know, it, it just seemed really try hardy in a lot of ways like a lot of the characters i feel were just trying to be edgy for the sake of being edgy but not done in a very tasteful way granted not all the characters were like that uh you know yumiko for example here was you know pretty decent character and, and, a, and a good strong lead for a series like this but a lot of the side characters after a while just started to get really stale and just really annoying with just how like edgy they were and, and i get it it's a it's kind of an edgy show but this this is kind of like fucking kaiji for children and if you ask me good show i wouldn't personally put it in a top 30. number 29 <laughs> is yuri on ice wow the video isn't even available uh on this article i've i've said my thoughts on yuri on ice in the past on the main channel and uh <laughs> my opinion let's just say on it is not the most accepted especially within the euro nice fan base because uh this i feel is a series that is not a sports anime and look that's not me saying i don't think figure skating is an actual sport i do believe it is an actual sport a sport which i know i would never be able to competently do in a million years but what i am saying is that yuri on ice is not a sports anime. As much as Kotaku is trying to fool you with putting this as sports, they also forget the bigger and more prominent genre, which is yaoi. Now look, granted, they don't like fuck in the show or anything like that, but goddamn, the fan base wishes they did. And the exceeding amount of doujins that were born as a result of this anime also tell a different story. Because when I was watching Yuri on Ice, for one, I, I hate the main character, Yuri. He is the biggest bitch I've ever met in my life. And, and maybe I'm just not a fan of like kind of wimpy, you know, whiny characters. Uh, and, and, you know, obviously just the fact that there were just so many like character stereotypes in Yuri on Ice as well that just got very stale after a while. But this is one of those anime that was really, really hype and hot and inescapable while it was airing and the year that it came out in 2016. But who's talking about Euro and Ice today? Not a lot of people. Number 28 is ReZero. Um, 
which is uh, shocking because I would definitely put it above number 28. Uh, this has definitely deserve a much higher spot. I would probably put it, it probably up at least in the top 20. Because ReZero for one made the Isekai trope, or I guess what the Isekai trope was about to become from the next, you know, six, seven years up until recently, just into the most concentrated genre in anime. Like, just think about the last couple of seasons, how many Isekai shows have come out just within the last couple of years. And ReZero was kind of there to kickstart it all. Now, granted, ReZero wasn't the only one to kickstart it, obviously, but it was a massive factor, especially with Isekai series that involved a lot more in just kind of uh, not exactly utilizing the whole power fantasy thing that series like Sword Art Online did, but rather the opposite of having a protagonist that is almost helpless and powerless and is just kind of dragged about by every person around them. And look, granted, just from the fact that we've seen so many freaking REM figures, even in 2023 and arcades in Japan and everywhere, just goes to show the staying power of ReZero and also just the massive hype that uh, the hopefully upcoming season three has on fans and anime fans. And I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, I watched both seasons. I personally preferred season one over season two because I felt season two was just kind of a, a build up uh, season. And I haven't read ahead on the light novel, so I don't know what's to come, but I've heard from light novel readers that it gets absolutely fucking wild. So I am looking forward to it. And I think ReZero does definitely deserve to be on a list like this. Okay, this was another one I was expecting. If you're probably wondering why all these videos are unavailable, it's because I'm in Japan and probably a lot of Japanese companies have blocked these videos, so don't worry about it. But I was expecting My Hero Academia to be on here. To be honest, I was expecting My Hero Academia to, to be a lot higher on the list just based on the popularity of the show and how beloved it is by so many people. But, you know, I, I honestly agree with this placement. As much as I am not the biggest fan of My Hero Academia, I do recognize its staying power and I do recognize its sheer popularity and what it kind of did for modern shonen. And yeah, I definitely do think that it does deserve uh, it to be placed in a top 30 list and I think this is a great placement for it. Wow, Violet Evergarden, number 26. Um, I would almost put this higher in my opinion. I, I think it should be in the high 20s or even just uh, within the top 20 at least. Uh, this show is absolutely gorgeous. The movie is also beautiful. Um, Kyoto Animation just went all out on this and just gave us one of, I think, the most powerful drama shows to come out from modern anime in a very, very long time and presented in just a beautiful package as well. It doesn't drag on too long. It's not too overblown. Now, granted, it is a bit of a slow start, but once you do get into the rhythm of Violet Evergarden and realize it's not like a My Hero Academia or like a, a Battle Shonen or anything like that, and it's using its quietness and slowness to its full advantage to give you just some of the most heart-wrenching and gorgeous scenes to come out from Kyoto Animation in a very long time. Yeah, I definitely do think it deserves to be in this top 30. So, wow, all right, Kotaku, you're doing all right so far. You're doing a ba This is a based pick for sure. Ooh, interesting. Kill the Kill, number 25. I mean, I think anybody can tell you just how much Kill the Kill did for modern anime. Uh, and the, to the fact that it came out 10 years ago is mind boggling. This, this, this show still looks amazing to this day. And it certainly was a massive, massive Kickstarter for Trigger to be a household name among anime fans. Uh, I still freaking love Kill la Kill. Granted, I don't think it's the most uh, perfect show that Trigger has made. I don't think it's the most perfect anime that has been made in, in general, but for what it was, and, and again, it's staying power, I think, yeah, Kill la Kill pretty much deserves this spot. This list so far is not that bad. Not as, definitely not as terrible as some of the other lists I've seen, that's for sure. Ooh, we got Space Dandy. Better than Kill la Kill. That's, that's a, that's a hard, uh, that's a hard decision. Space Dandy is a great show, don't get me wrong. I personally would not put Space Dandy in a top 30. I think if we were to make like a top 50, Space Dandy, yes, definitely would be in this list. I don't know. I, I liked Space Dandy, but uh, there were also a lot of segments that just 
were a little bit too like lol random for me you know even though the, the character writing is great and again the visuals bones went so hard on this i'm just really surprised that it ranks above series like kill a kill and violet evergarden which i think deserve to be in a higher spot than space dandy personally no no erased at number 23 better than space dandy no no that's that's an l that's 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 another l i understand what erased did for modern uh drama and uh i guess kind of mysteries in modern anime but it's just the there are so many parts. The first half of a race is great. Don't get me wrong. The first half of a race is great. The setup and the whole concept of going back in time to, you know, solve future events and stuff like that for the main character was done absolutely brilliantly. Um, some of the side characters are some of the most complex side characters that have been written in anime in the past decade. But just it's the second half that drags a race down into the mud, in my opinion. Just the fact that the the, the main villain, again, I've, I've mentioned this in so many videos, but my biggest problem with Erased was the second half where the the reveal I guess the soft reveal of the main villain was just done in the most tacky obvious way which you should not be doing for a mystery series like this and the ending is just the the biggest cop out after all of that build up of side characters and plot progression and everything like that and you ended it the way that you ended it is just uh, it was a big slap on the face for me as a viewer um i think there could have been so many better ways to wrap up a story like that just not make it some one of the most pathetic displays of a, a, an evil villain in a murder mystery series um i definitely do think that because of that erased in my opinion does not deserve to be in the top 30 and uh past couple of series that we mentioned in this video definitely deserve to be on a higher spot than fucking erased okay haikyuu i personally have not seen haikyuu so i can't give too many opinions on it but again this is another series that has had its staying power that that did really kind of revitalize sports anime for a lot of people now granted there are other sports anime like kuroko no Basuke, uh you know and 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 like euro nice for example that you know did try to like claw its way up to the top as well but the biggest thing that haikyuu did i think for a lot of people was it made people care about a sport which i'm guaranteed 99 percent of people who watched haikyuu had probably never given a shit about volleyball before they started watching it it is just a really solid way of using the sport to create some of the most unique and just brilliantly executed character dynamics that i think modern sports anime has seen and this is coming from someone who hasn't seen haiku i've i've seen a bunch of clips i know a lot about it just through osmosis because everyone fucking talks about haiku and just how great it is and don't worry i'll eventually get to it okay haiku fans stop getting on my ass about that but even i can tell you that haiku i think is deserving of this spot just purely from the fact that it really did get a lot of people who were previously not into sports anime into sports anime yeah look i, I don't know about the, the the specific placement because again i haven't seen it but if I were to include some anime that I personally haven't seen into a top 30, yeah, I think Haikyuu deserves it. Promise Neverland at number 21. Uh, I really hope they're talking about Promise Neverland season one and not season two. If we're just including season one, yes, I think it deserves to be in the top 30. But if we're looking at it as purely just a package of the entire series, all seasons included, no, I don't think Promise Neverland deserves to be in the top 30 just because of how much they fucked up season two um anyone who's seen season two of promise neverland can tell you just how traumatically bad especially that ending was and it being probably a bigger cop out than the ending of erased but again if we're just looking at season one yes amazingly written story great animation from cloverworks just yeah really solid almost horror shonen if that's even a genre um i really enjoyed season one that's why the disappointment was so big for season two because we were all expecting great from season one in season two and we just did not get that so again if we're just talking about season one yes definitely this placement no uh issues at all but if we're looking at it overall i personally wouldn't put it in the top 30 moving on into the top 20 and we have assassination classroom wow i was not expecting that now granted 
I finished all of Assassination Classroom because I'm a massive fan of the original manga artist. I really enjoyed it. I didn't think I was going to enjoy Assassination Classroom as much as I did, but especially in the later season, it really picked up in a great way. It kind of started off as just like your standard shonen, you know, like slow build up. But I think the payoff, especially with that ending scene, which admittedly did make me tear up, uh, was was a great send off for a series like Assassination Classroom. I personally really enjoyed it. Would I put it at number 20 of the best anime of the decade? Maybe not, but I would probably put it somewhere within the top 30, um, maybe like a 25 or a 26, something like that. But I'm just surprised that Kotaku was like, yeah, let's let's give Assassination Classroom some love because I, I agree. I do think Assassination Classroom deserves a lot more love than what it currently has right now. Number 19 is Konosuba. Yes, I, I totally agree with that. I would even put it a little bit higher. I would maybe put it in the top 15 because this is a lot like ReZero where it took the idea of isekai and at the time gave us something quite unique and new like a like it, i i always like to call konosuba like almost like the gintama of isekai where it's so self-aware of how stupid its genre can be that it's not afraid to make fun of what it is and it does it in a really tasteful and fucking hilarious way like both seasons of uh Quantum super were great uh even the movie was really really good and and i actually ended up laughing out loud quite a bit when i watched the movie in cinemas as well i think yeah just in general the Quantum super series is fantastic i really really enjoyed it and yeah i think definitely deserves to be on this list if not higher okay another one that i haven't watched all the way through but i've heard a lot about summertime render I, because i haven't actually finished summertime rendering uh i, I think i got to maybe about episode four or five uh, what little i did watch of summertime rendering though was good i really enjoyed it i don't have the strongest opinions on it so i don't know if I would personally include it just because again I haven't finished it but I guess you guys who have finished some time rendering let me know in the comments if you think it deserves a number 18 spot or not um I, I have no strong thoughts on it Golden Kamui at number 17. Uh, yes, I, I totally agree with this. Uh, I think Golden Kamui is a fantastic series. Uh, almost, again, th throwing in, uh, taking the, I guess, the concept of, like, a lot of action series and, like, even throwing in a little bit of the comedy as well. Like, there were some scenes in Golden Kamui, I remember, that were, like, genuinely funny, especially in context of the show. But when it got badass, it got fucking bad as and again just the whole concept of including the ainu culture into a scene in action is just so unique and so cool and it, and it really got me invested and interested in the world and it did such a good job at that as well uh great characters i thoroughly enjoy golden kamui and uh yeah i i would personally put it on a top 30 as well okay wow I guess recency bias is uh, not a thing, according to Kotaku, because they put Chainsaw Man at number 16. I was full expecting that we're going to put Chainsaw Man in this, because again, I think anyone who has been on the internet for the past year heard of Chainsaw Man, if not watched it. Um, now, look, granted, I love Fujimoto Tatsuki. I, I, put, I would personally put him in my top five manga artists of all time. That man is a genius, and Chainsaw Man is fucking brilliant. The anime as well also brilliant i would yeah if i would probably put it on a top 30 list but again what i was surprised about is that i thought for sure kotaka was going to put this in like top 10 which i personally don't really agree with um i wouldn't put chainsaw man in a top 10 personally i would probably put it in a top 20 though so wow okay so far this list is surprisingly decent it's it's not bad at all Ooh, odd taxi and number 15, um, I actually disagree. I think Odd Taxi deserves to be in the top 10. I actually just recently finished watching it and uh, I also watched the movie as well. It's fucking fantastic. There's not a single character in Odd Taxi that is bad in any way. Every character was enjoyable and every scene meant something. There is absolutely, it's all killer, no filler. It is fucking great. If you want to see something that's a little more unique, then uh, yeah, I would definitely go check out Odd Taxi and the movie as well. The movie is fantastic. And I definitely would put Odd Taxi at least in a top 10. Okay, ranking of kings. Uh, now, I uh, this was another one that I haven't finished, but I have heard that it is absolutely fucking beloved. And the little, again, that I did watch, I really, really enjoyed it. Again, guys, let me know in the comments if you think ranking of kings deserves to be number 14 or not. That's that's up to you guys to decide because uh, I'm still yet to finish it. And I, don't worry, I will, I will eventually finish it, okay? Spy Family, number 13. Um, I disagree with this as much as i liked spy family i would actually put this maybe 
closer into the low tens, maybe early twenties, I would put it on a top 30 for sure. Really, really enjoyable. I mean, every character is great. Uh, you know, Lloyd is a fucking badass. Yor is hot as hell. Anya is like uh, the daughter that we all wish we had. The animation and voice acting, especially the casting was brilliant. Um, I think that's the biggest thing that really made Spy Family special, which I feel like doesn't get enough credit. The Japanese cast, the voice cast was perfect. Like, as someone who started off reading the manga for Spy Family, I the, when I heard the voices in the anime, they were exactly how they sounded in my head when I was reading the manga. And that happens not as often as you think it does. As much as I enjoyed it, I think there were better shows. It's already even on this list that I would put probably above Spy Family. Like, I would probably put, like, Kill a Kill, and uh, obviously Odd Taxi, as I was saying earlier, and even Violet Evergarden, probably higher than Spy Family, just from an overall enjoyment basis. Because, uh, granted, I did actually kind of prefer the manga of Spy Family, but that's just me. Okay, <sighs> fuck's sake. Look, okay, this is what I was talking about with recency bias. Bocce the Rock and number 12. I hate talking about Bocce the Rock in videos because the, the, the Bocce community has turned into, like, basically what the Euro Nice community was back when it came out. It's just, it's so dedicated to Bocce. And it's like they've never seen Beck or Kaon or any other like music anime ever in their lives. Granted, let me, let me just preface this because I know Bolchi the Rock fans hate hearing criticism, e even any slight criticism about their show. I like Bolchi the Rock, okay? I haven't finished it. I'm about seven episodes in and it's a great series. Don't get me wrong. But already based on anime on this list, there are better shows out there. And it's so difficult to figure out on the grand scale of things if Bocce will even last in terms of relevancy within the next year or so. Like, we don't know about that. People were saying the same shit about Euro Nice, thinking like, oh, it's the greatest anime ever made. And no one fucking talks about Euro Nice anymore now, do they? So what's to say that Bocce is not going to run into the same problem? What's to say that there's not going to be another music anime or basic human drama with a little bit of music thrown into an anime that doesn't trump Bocce the Rock. It's hard to say, right? So recency bias is a, a difficult thing to get around. I would definitely not put Bocce the Rock at number 12. Like, I'm just going to say that straight up. Uh, sorry, Bocce fans. It is a good show, but it is not the number 12 of the best anime of the decade. That, 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 that is just cap. You cannot convince me to put Bocce at number 12 on a list like this in any circumstance. Okay, One Punch Man number 11. Uh, now, I was expecting One Punch Man, obviously, as we saw in the beginning slide, but I thought for sure that we're going to put One Punch Man in, like, the top five. This is an absolutely beloved show. Now, again, the same thing with Promised Neverland. Are we just talking about season one or are we talking about season two as well? Because season two was not all that, unfortunately. The, 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 the studio switch kind of put a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths, especially One Punch Man fans, because it just wasn't the same as what Madhouse provided in season one. And season one is great. And in season two, as much as I didn't enjoy it as much as season one, I still finished it. And, you know, it's it's still a great show. It's still a great written show. But it does start to get a little bit stale in some aspects. Because, again, they're kind of holding on to this whole Saitama can kill everything with one punch. It's, it's very difficult to keep a show that has one strong gimmick, whether it be parodic or serious or anything, and keep that going for a long period of time. You know, I, I, I personally call it the Horimiya problem, where just like Horimiya, they had one concept and they kept dragging it on and on and on and on to the point where people started to be like, hey, this is kind of getting boring. You know, unfortunately, there are a lot of shows like that, like say My Dress Up Darling is also running into that same problem in the manga where it's just starting to get fucking boring now. And I really just hope One Punch Man doesn't end up in that same route. Now, granted, I don't read the manga for One Punch Man and I've heard different stories from manga readers, but we're just talking about the anime. I would definitely put One Punch Man in a top 30, but I would not put it at number 11. I would maybe put it somewhere closer to like 18, 17, somewhere around there. All right, going into the top 10, and of course we have Demon Slayer. Uh, again, another series that I was fully expecting. Look, I, I like Demon Slayer. I do. I like both seasons. I've seen the movie. I've seen everything that the anime of Demon Slayer has to offer so far, but... I also do think that a lot of Demon Slayer is kind of overrated. Yes, it is a good fantasy action shonen, but Demon Slayer unfortunately has this problem of it being so by the book shonen. For someone who has 
seen and read a lot of shonen in the past, watching Demon Slayer now, it's nothing particularly new or refreshing. And again, this is, I feel, one of those series that is so heavily dependent on how good the animation is, because a lot of people talk about just some of the most insane animated fight scenes to come out of Shonen recently coming from Demon Slayer, which I fully agree with, especially in season two, there were some fights which were just cocaine for the eyes, fucking amazing fight scenes. But when it comes to say like the manga, for instance, it's pretty unreadable. Like it's, it's not as action packed and impactful as what UFO table did for the anime in terms of the strength of the series overall. That's a, a big detriment, I think. And, uh, you know, there's a couple of series that, uh, which I'm sure is going to pop up within this top 10 eventually. So I'll kind of get to it. That kind of fit that same mold as Demon Slayer. Now I would put Demon Slayer in the top 30. Absolutely. It is, you know, one of the like best fucking shonens to come out in the past 10 years, I think in terms of like just commercial sales and commercial notoriety but in terms of series like anime series from all genres i think there are definitely better ones out there Ah, here we go. This is another one that I've been talking about as well. Jujutsu Kaisen, a number nine, which again is surprising. I thought both Jujutsu Kaisen and Demon Slayer were going to be at number top five, at least. So, you know, based on Kotaku to say that. But again, this is another one where, have you heard of any Jujutsu Kaisen manga fans? No, you haven't. You know why? Because Jujutsu Kaisen is another series that is so heavily dependent on how good MAPPA made the anime look. I just feel like as as longtime shonen fans, Jujutsu Kaisen doesn't really do anything new. I know this may, might sound controversial, but I still am a firm believer that Jujutsu Kaisen is just the bleach of this generation. And you can quote me on that, and you don't honestly have to go watch Jujutsu Kaisen anymore now that the bleach anime is back. <laughs> okay, wow, number eight is Blue Period. Um that's a surprise. Blue Period better than Demon Slayer and Jujutsu Kaisen. The Shonen fans are not going to be happy about that one. I think Blue Period is kind of in the opposite problem to Jujutsu Kaisen and Demon Slayer, where I definitely think the strength of Blue Period comes from the manga and not the anime. Granted, Seven Arcs did a pretty decent job of animating the manga, and they did it, you know, pretty satisfactorily, especially concerning that, you know, it is an art manga and an art story. I just have definitely felt more of a connection to the characters and the way that the manga was kind of paced out in a very slow yet methodical and very, I guess, time consuming way. But that time consumption really made you feel certain complex emotions that these characters are going through. Because again, this is very, this is a very different shonen to all the other ones that we've seen where it is very much an internal shonen. There is no like extravagant battles or anything it is a pure drama human drama human psychological drama and i really fucking enjoyed it uh it is a great anime but would i put it at number eight above jujutsu kaisen and demon slayer probably not whoa number seven b stars based b -b 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 based yes absolutely i 100 percent agree b stars absolutely deserves to be in the top 10 anime of the decade it's so fucking good and it's such a shame that so many people didn't watch it because a it's a studio orange work which means that it's fully mo-capped aka 3d animation which you know everyone has weird opinions on that but two you know it's the the, the whole furry thing which i think is just so dumb if liking b stars makes me a furry then call me a fucking furry but it is one of the most meticulous and just deep and groundbreaking in my opinion anime to come out and manga to come out in a very very long time and i enjoyed beastars so much more than i ever thought i was going to and the manga was already great um the manga was already fucking fantastic but then when studio orange took the reins and decided to really do a bold move by turning it into a 3d animation i thought oh god this is the end they just they just ruined beastars for me forever but turns out they actually improved upon it and made it one of the most enjoyable fully 3d anime that i've probably ever seen it is definitely deserving of a top 10 thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it i really hope we get a season three because trust me after season two if you've read the manga you would know shit starts to go down boys okay wow Ushoku tensei 
and number six. I mean, honestly, I'm I am not dissatisfied with that. I I definitely think out of isekai that have come out in the past decade, Mushoku Tensei is probably up there as one of the best. It is so beautifully animated, regardless of the fact that the, the main character is a bit of a shithead. Everything else about it is really fucking good. And you know, this is taken from me, someone who is not an isekai fan in the slightest. Mushoku Tensei is fucking up there as probably one of the most enjoyable isekais and in my opinion an isekai that finally did it right. Out of all of the isekai we've had in the past decade, Mushoku Tensei is probably one that did it right. Would I necessarily put it in a top 10? Maybe not. Maybe maybe closer to like 13, 12. But hey, you know, I'm, I'm still not dissatisfied with this position. I'm actually quite surprised <laughs> that it ended up being in a position this high. All right, moving on to the top five, we have Vinland Saga. Yes, no questions asked. Villain Saga absolutely deserves to be on a list and absolutely deserves to be in the top 10. Villain Saga is fucking fantastic. Granted, season two was a little bit of a farming simulator, but that's just a buildup. It's it's like ReZero season two. It's the Think of it as the buildup season. And because from here on out, trust me, manga fans know shit goes down and it's going to be fucking tight when Wit Studio Mapper pull it out into the world and give us beauty, the, the, the beauty of Villain Saga into our eyes. Whoa. Cyberpunk Edge Runners at number four, anime of the year 2023. Uh, that is surprising. I was actually wondering if Cyberpunk was actually going to be even on this list. I was definitely not expecting it to be at number four. As much as I love, loved, loved Cyberpunk Edge Runners, I genuinely think it's one of the best things that Trigger has made, probably ever, in my opinion. It's one of it's it's I enjoyed it so fucking much. And I would definitely put it on a list like this, but I don't know if I would put it at number four. That's that's pretty high. That's really, really high up there. But then I'm also thinking about it, like I don't really see any issues with it being at a number four spot. So maybe it, it does deserve to be in a number four spot. I don't know. We, we, we thought, I, I'm just so like blown away at the fact that they put Cyberpunk Edge Runners are number four, but yeah, it's it's pretty up there. This this series was fucking fantastic, um, and I definitely recommend it, especially for how much of a punch it provided for just twelve episodes. I think it was, or I think it was even less than that. This series is fucking great, and I really hope we get a sequel out of it soon. Okay, Attack on Titan number three. To be honest, I was expecting this to be a number one, so I'm kind of surprised, but also not surprised that uh, it is up there. You know what? I don't have any complaints with it. Attack on Titan is probably considered by many, no matter how jaded of an anime fan you might be, Attack on Titan is going to end up being a modern masterpiece if it isn't already. So yeah, I was fully expecting that. Um, again, I thought it was gonna be a number one. So hey, I'm totally okay with it. Number three, well-deserved. But then what's number two and one going to be? What, what haven't we seen so far that has been on this list? Is Jojo going to be up on this list? Or did, did that come out before 2013? Or are they not including it if it's an older series? I don't know. Let's find out. Okay. Kaguya-sama Love is War. Number two. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I guess, yeah. I would definitely put it in a top 10, that's for sure. This was another, I think, modern masterpiece of romance anime to come out, especially in the past 10 years. And I think it managed to do a lot with the genres that it used to create a really unique experience for something in the rom-com genre. It's fucking animated fantastically. All the seasons were great. I would definitely put it in a top 10 for sure. But number two, wow, that's very surprising. All right, let's find out what number one is. Okay, it's Mob Psycho 100, sure. I, I fully deserved, in my opinion. I'm just surprised. Again, I was fully expecting Mob Psycho and One Punch Man to be on this list, but the, the difference in position between Mob Psycho 100 and One Punch Man is very surprising. I thought it would, they were going to be either a lot close together, or I was even fully expecting One Punch Man to be above Mob Psycho 100, but I'm pretty satisfied with that. Would I put it at number one of the decade? Probably not, but I would definitely put it uh, at least in like the top 15 for sure. The Mob Psycho 100 was brilliant and it's probably one of Bones' best works. So yeah, overall, uh, Kotaku, it's not a bad list. I was fully expecting it to be way, way, way worse than what it actually ended up being, but I'm actually quite satisfied with this list. Although I will say that there are a couple of series I think that I would have personally put on this list. For example, where is Devilman Crybaby? Devilman Crybaby was fucking fantastic, brilliant series, amazing modern rendition of the classic Devilman series, which I 
I think definitely deserves to be in the top 30 for sure. I would have even put maybe like a Your Lie in April or like where's Monogatari series season two? Like that, that single-handedly made so many people fall in love with the Monogatari series just from how good and refined it was, especially from the first couple of seasons. I think as well, the balance for this was pretty good, but I would have liked to have seen some, I guess, older within the decade series. Like where is like Devil is a part-timer? I would have definitely put that in the top 30 for sure. Even something like Eccentric Family, which all think Kazuka, I think is one of the most underrated series from, I think, 24. 14, 2013, something like that. I'm pretty sure it's within the decade. So yeah, obviously there are a lot of, I guess, you know, personal picks I would have put into this list, but overall Kotaku, not bad, not bad. I, I actually do think this is one of the most decent top 30 anime of the decade lists I've seen from, you know, big companies and stuff like that, not from a personal list. But again, you know, this list is is, is just Kotaku's opinion and, and my thoughts on it are, are also just my opinion. So yeah, that was the list. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you personally would have included, maybe not included, maybe changed around and stuff like that. I'd be interested to know. And uh, hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smack my face right here to subscribe to the channel. Let's keep making big channel number go bigger. I'll be next to my haters. A couple more videos you can check out if you enjoyed this one and the links to my social media, TikTok and YouTube shorts channels, as well as my Patreon if you like to support me directly, all down in the description. But yeah, Kotaku, based list, pretty good. Anime is great. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.